Okay, as Jessica said, we're using the National Crime Victimization Survey, which did not ask whether people are citizens or not and whether they're immigrants um, until 2017. Um, but now they do. So this is really the first truly representative sample of actual victims. It's not hypothetical. It's not, would you report a crime? It asks victims specifically, did you report the crime? What type of crime it was? And so forth. And now we can identify the immigrants. It's a panel survey. So they follow people for several years in the same household. It's a survey of people 12 years of age and over. The one crime it doesn't include, obviously, because they're focused on victims, is murders. It also really isn't a good measure of crimes against young children. But other than that, the victim survives. Uh, it should be a representative sample. And it is basically the gold standard for measuring uh, victimizations. Now, the immigrant sample is not that big. Immigrants are only about 14 percent of the population. So um, it's sometimes a challenge to get a representative sample of that. But because we have three years of data now, 17, 18, and 19, in which immigrants can be identified, we can use a combined sample. When we look at all crimes, the sample is about 2,800 people uh, who are immigrants in the survey. That's all types of immigrants, citizen, non-citizen, and so forth. Um, so when I use the term immigrant here, let me just be clear that I'm talking about what is often referred to by, uh, by the government as the foreign born. These are all people who are not U.S. citizens at birth. So it would include naturalized citizens, lawful permanent residents, those with a green card. It also include temporary visitors who get picked up in surveys of this kind. And it'll also include illegal immigrants. The survey is actually conducted by the Census Bureau. We know from other Census Bureau surveys um, that immigrants are captured in these surveys, including illegal immigrants, are in very significant numbers. We know that immigrants, including illegal immigrants, respond to the decennial census every 10 years. The survey, again, is done by the Census Bureau, uh, but for the um, Bureau of Justice Statistics, which is part of the Department of Justice. Um, now, government publications using this data, which come out every year, generally focus on what's called serious crime. Jessica put up a chart of all crime. That includes very serious crimes, but also um, crimes that are much less serious. Uh, small, petty thefts, for example, make up a lot when you put in all crimes. But um, when we look at serious crimes, which is what most people use this survey to focus on, um, it includes things like... Um, uh, Assault, except simple assault, includes completed burglaries, motor the uh, vehicle theft, sexual crimes, or most sexual crimes. Um, the other thing people look at is serious violent crime, not just serious crime, but serious violent crime. And that, again, includes uh, rape, sexual assaults, robbery, and aggravated assault. So when we're looking at um, serious crimes and serious violent crimes, that's what we're looking at. Um, can we put up uh, figure uh, two, please, so we can see see this? So on the left part of the table, you see uh, the figure is um, all serious crime, which is basically all the serious violent crime and all the serious property crime together. And what it shows is that immigrants uh, and non-citizens, including Hispanics, um, who are not citizens of the United States, um, report those crimes at rates that match or the little asterisk shows when the difference with the U.S. born or the native born are statistically significant. So when we look at all serious crime, we find that in some cases, not only is the percentage higher, but the difference is statistically significant in this survey. So that would suggest or that's an indication that when it comes to serious crime, immigrants are at least as likely, including non-citizen Hispanics, to report serious crime as U.S. born people. Um, on the other side of the uh, figure is serious violent crime. So this is really the, the worst type of crime, the most devastating for individuals and communities, the type of crime that we really want everybody to report. This is not petty stuff. This is the, the, the worst of the worst. Um, these are all felonies, for example. Um, and what we see on when we look at serious violent crime is that in every case, the immigrants, including non-citizen Hispanics, are more likely to report crime than are the U.S. born. And all the differences at various levels are statistically significant. So we can say from this data that there's just no evidence when it comes to serious and serious violent crime that immigrants are reporting them at lower rates to the police. So all that cooperation that takes place between ICE and um, uh, local law enforcement has not resulted in uh, immigrants 
including non-citizens, reporting crimes at lower rates. Um, now, there is a group that's often of special concern. Um, the thought is that within immigrant communities, sometimes women especially, especially women who are victims of serious, especially serious violent crime. Let's put up figure three. Um, and here again, we're looking at serious uh, crimes and serious violent crimes against women. The left side of the table is the serious, all serious crime, so that's serious violent and serious property crime. And then the right side is just serious violent crime, which includes, you know, crimes by domestic partners and all the sexual offenses um, and, and assaults, except simple assault, which is usually the least serious. And what we again see is that reporting by immigrant women, including non-citizen Hispanics, tends to exceed reporting by native-born women, those women born in the United States. And I think this is uh, really important. So part of the fear that, look, you know, immigrant women in particular, especially those here illegally or those who are not citizens of the United States and fear deportation, well, they're not coming forward. They're victimized a lot and they don't come forward. The National Crime Victimization Survey, as you can see here, does not support that inclusion at all. They seem to be coming forward more than does the native born. Now, we'd like all crimes to get reported, so there's always room for improvement, but it, it does not appear that they fear the police, that the police are gonna do something that they fear, and then they don't go to the police. So I think that uh, that population that we think might be specially uh, vulnerable, women, particularly non-citizens, particularly non-citizen Hispanic women, they're going to police at rates that match or exceed the native born. Now, I could go into a lot more detail uh, about the report. Let me hit on uh, two other topics before I conclude. Um, one of the things we looked at, too, was the survey does ask people who didn't report their crime, why didn't you come forward? Why didn't you go to the police? Um, now, they have a whole myriad, I believe it's 21 possible answers that they can give to that question. But uh, there are two that may indicate a fear of deportation. One is that the police would cause me trouble, the police would harass me, and another possible answer is I was advised not to go to the police, like that advocate, that, um, that immigrant advocacy group that Jessica spoke of at the outset. But when we look at the data, less than 1% of all immigrants, including non-citizens, said that if they didn't go to the police, that the reason they didn't is because they feared the authorities. As best we can tell from this data, um, immigrants not only are at least and often more likely to go to police, especially for the big crimes, but that when they don't, it doesn't appear that they uh, fear the police. The main reason that they gave uh, seems to be it was, it was petty, I recovered the property, or it was small stuff, or the police wouldn't think it was important, and some other reasons like that. But they don't indicate that distrust of the police and that the police are going to cause them trouble or harass them in some way um, is the reason. Now, they don't ask directly about deportation or fear of immigration authorities, but the answers that seem most likely to reflect that fear are seldom given for the subgroup of people who didn't go to the police. Now, as Jessica uh, suggested, um, we can't use this survey to look at specific communities. The sample's just not big enough of the immigrants in particular. And of course, the data doesn't, the public use data that we use here doesn't break it out by state or locality anyway. But again, the sample wouldn't be big enough. But what we, can, we do get, for example, is uh, regions of the country. And this is, is illustrative of one thing, and that is regions of the country do differ in the level of cooperation with immigration authorities, with the South being the most cooperative, whether we look at those that have the 287G program. And so, um, as you can see from the figure up here, this is the figure that looks by region. And the one side looks at all immigrants and the other side looks at non-citizens. We can't really use this to look deeply at non-citizen Hispanics so much because the sample does get too small, but we can look at all non-citizens. The red bar, I think, is maybe the most interesting. That is the South. That's where communities routinely cooperate the most or go the extra step and have a 287G program. The parts of the country where immigrants uh, cooperate the least tend to be the Northeast and, of course, the West, with states like California being the paradigm example. 
And yet, when we look at all immigrants, the one statistically significant difference is between the South and the West, with immigrants in the South reporting crimes at 44 percent versus 36 percent for um, immigrants in the West. Um, now, that's, that's for all crimes. Um, now, I wouldn't say that that's definitive evidence, but it does suggest or it's an indication that cooperation with local immigration authorities does not result in low crime reporting. We also do some other analysis where we look at community size. Bigger communities are less likely to cooperate. Uh, uh, smaller communities are more likely to cooperate with ICE. And again, we could find no obvious uh, relationship. In fact, in many areas, when you drill down by region or community size, it's uh, immigrants are actually more likely also to cooperate than are the native born, which reflects the national pattern. And certainly we don't see a variation across the region despite differing levels of cooperation. Um, so I guess the bottom line I would say is that the National Crime Victimization Survey um, does not show, A, that immigrants are less willing to report crime. Uh, if anything, when it comes to serious crime, they're more willing, including non-citizen Hispanics. I only made a point of non-citizen Hispanics because it seems likely, based on that analysis of other data that the Census Bureau also collects, um, <clears throat> that probably very roughly two-thirds of non-citizen citizen Hispanics are either in the country illegally in the survey or live with someone in the country illegally. So they should be the most reluctant to come forward. But that's not really what we see in the data, particularly relative to the native born.